speakers of the event, um, of course, uh, Mr. Nurul Haq Nasimi, the chair of this campaign, who will come and um, enlighten us about the uh, efforts that he has made and about the prospect and all the enriching views that um, he will be putting across in a few minutes. Uh, so I call upon Mr. Nasimi to come and enlighten us. second annual conference of the European Campaign for Human Rights in Afghanistan. It has been a year since the launch and the first conference. And the campaign has strived to achieve those actions that we pledged towards at the last conference in July. The last conference saw discussions around the themes. What is campaigning? The role, of, the role of the community and voluntary sector in promoting human rights. There was a panel on women and human rights and several other discussions related to human rights in Afghanistan and the diaspora. Over the last year, the campaign has gained valuable experience in finding its feet in the world of non-governmental organizations with the help of a group of volunteers from diverse backgrounds working together for the cause we are in a stronger position now than we were last year. We now have in place a social media arm of the campaign using Twitter and Facebook to further the agenda of the campaign and also to increase its visibility. We are currently in the process of creating partnerships and relationships with other organizations, both in the United Kingdom and in Afghanistan. Our monthly newsletter has also allowed us to have our own platform in which to encourage many causes, such as the creation of a secular and democratic federal government in Afghanistan, by working with other organizations, applying pressure on politicians to address security and poor access to education and employment, and in placing images of human rights abuses in Afghanistan drawing attention to the need for increased focus on respect for human rights. We have also hosted activities and events that promote the cultural diversity of Afghanistan, such as the New Year celebration on March 23rd at Goldsmith, which included poetry and presentation. Lastly, we have encouraged the further participation of women in the organization and celebrating last month's International Women's Day. We celebrated great women of the past and discussed the issues affecting women in Afghanistan today. This increased participation of women in the organization brings us to the title of this year's conference, towards realizing women's rights in Afghanistan and the diaspora. However, this conference will not only focus on the domestic situation in Afghanistan, but also on Afghanistan women in the EU and United Kingdom. Our sister organization, the Afghanistan and Central Asian Association, established the Zanon Women's Project in order to support women from Afghanistan and Central Asia. Experiencing violence, depression, stress, and isolation. 
There is a gap in service provision for, for our women, a gap which this project was intended to fill from our first-hand interaction with women in the project, we found that generic services either lack preparation and resources to support women or failed to adequately grasp the complexity of their needs. From further discussion with the attendees at our women campaign, November 2011, we have found that Many of these women face a culture of racism and discrimination leading to social, political, and economic exclusion. As a result of this isolation, the access routes to services which should be in place to help Afghanistan women have been closed off, and many of the most vulnerable women have found themselves unrepresented and isolated in this culture that claims to be so accepting and prepared to aid those members of society who are most at risk. This wide gap that I have just described has to be filled, and that is where the work of the association comes in. Through this project, we set up health classes to increase the self-esteem, improve their health, and interact with other refugee women, hold trips, day outings, and social and cultural events, again, in an effort to foster close bonds between these women who feel so isolated, and by bringing them together and showing them that they are not alone, we hope to foster a strong, a stronger community. Provided easel classes to support them in their English skills and find employment. Provided volunteering opportunities at our organization. In addition to this, we hold counseling services and one-to-one -one sessions and provide regular rights-based advice and information services. The project not only allowed women to express themselves in an open forum, but also determined the next steps for the campaign in order to find solutions for the issues discussed. There was high consensus for the idea of promoting women's rights, participations in higher education institutions, and professional knowledge acquisition within the UK. It was also suggested that encouraging women's participation in decision-making would enhance their representation in positions of importance. Although members recognize that achieving women's empowerment can be done through initiative, emphasis was also applied to making use of social services and volunteering opportunities to enhance self-esteem. There are, there are, these are all good ideas, and the provision of services to those who would not normally receive them is important. But what is really required is a shift from a position of feeling depressed or of being forgotten. And instead, we need empowerment and a show of strength that although these are trying times, they will not be allowed to be seen as a forgotten society. This can only come from those members of society making that change. We as an organization can help, but the driving force comes from the affected women themselves. Britain's progress in terms of women's rights has been ongoing and we are still not at a point that we can indisputably say that we have gender equality. But what must be remembered from this progress is that the most successful advances have come from women themselves. The granting of the vote 
for a woman in 1928 did not come from men sitting in the houses of parliament, but from the suffragette movement, a group of women with determination and a strong sense of what is just and what is right. This must be seen as the example above all others that women are the driving force of their future. This is why we look to the opinions of women attending the Zanon project. The pers perspective we need is that of women, both in terms of what is missing from their lives right now and what initiatives would help them in the future. Working side by side with this woman allows us the change to happen on their terms for their benefit and for our own collective future. Gender equality in Afghanistan is at a very early stage and faces a whole host of cultural heartland that must be overcome if the overriding goal of gender equality is to be achieved. While the Taliban is no longer in power in Afghanistan, many men still implement the Taliban's appalling tactics, such as forcing chastity examination, imprisoning women for refusing to marry or for leaving a marriage, and most worryingly, blocking access to, the, to education and justice in cases of a state orchestrated sexual assault. The question we are faced, what is what we what can be done in this situation? It is a position of difficulty for an organization like the European Campaign for Human Rights in Afghanistan, based in London, to be able to tackle the problem, which is obviously a matter that is entirely a domestic issue. The change must come from within Afghanistan. The situation is further worsened by the inability of women to integrate into the workforce. A clear indication of this is the statistic that only 35% of women in Afghanistan are employed outside the home. A 2006 report by the Congressional Research Service found that one of the major obstacles for women in joining the workforce is finding culturally appropriate jobs, since it is considered unusual in many cases for women to work with men. The solution to this problem requires us to change tribal culture. This has been the dominant culture in Afghanistan in the last two decades. A change such as the, this does not come in months or years, but decades of work. The benefit may not be experienced by this generation, but we must stop thinking this shift. We must stop thinking about short-term gains and begin to look at the long term. It is only through this shift in thought that, is, that lasting change is secured. The task may be difficult, but the answer is simple, education. There have been massive improvement in girls' education in Afghanistan after the collapse of the Taliban in 2001. By 2008, one million girls were in a school. The number of classrooms in the country has tripled and teacher recruitment has increased. This statistic is encouraging, but it must be built upon Primary school attendance of girls may be strong, but by the age of 18, only 18% 18 of girls are still in school. This is just another example of the short-term gain that is strive for. Primary education is important. No one can dispute that, but it is useful only as a step towards secondary and if chosen for the education. The European Campaign for Human Rights in Afghanistan has members and volunteers in Afghanistan. 
This is an important point to remember because of the need for internal change. Through fundraising by our volunteers in Afghanistan, we are hoping to receive support and funding to start programs for education of women's rights and also the beginning of a media campaign within Afghanistan that aims to reach out to the rural areas, not just in Kabul and engage them in the debate. The support we can provide is through facilitation of that interaction, running women-only workshops like we have here, where women can voice their opinions and share their experiences with one another. Change comes not from the work of one man, but from the work of a nation across generations. And it is the campaign's aim that the work begins quickly. Finally, I would like to thank all of you for showing your support today, both members and non-members of, of our campaign. It is very important to us that so many people believe in the possibility of change and are here to help the campaign. As a democratic membership-led organization, we are looking forward to getting more ideas from you this afternoon in the working groups on the direction of our future plans. For any of you who are not members but who would like to join or find out more about the work, I would be happy to speak to you today during the breaks or lunch. I also would like to thank you uh, clear from the European Council for Refugee Exile, uh, Mariam Amon from BBC Persia on Afghanistan section, uh, Samantha and Mark from Lucian Police and Prevent uh, Department, Abdul Saeed from Lucian Council, Mr. Kawani from Refugee Council, and all our sister, especially. I can, I can see that he just arrived from Holland, Mr. Said Ekram Tahiri, and so many other respected brothers and sisters that participated in such important campaign in order to start thinking how we can work together to achieve more and use the goldest opportunities that we have in a such beautiful and democratic society like Great Britain. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nasimi, for your enlightful, enlightening uh, presentation. And uh, I'm sure everybody appreciates the fact that you have. Probably invite Dr. Nassimi to tell us how we'll take this forward and close the event. There was that discussion about health, education, and then domestic violence, media, which seems is quite promising and is very essential and important issues to be addressed in the future by the campaign. I think the most important things I, I have to go for education, as I mentioned in my interview yesterday with the Voice of America, uh, the Article 26 of the International Declaration on Human Rights clearly said that primary education is free should be provided for free and it should be compulsory. Unfortunately, a lot of countries around the world they don't <coughs> implement this obligation by the, uh, passed by the international community. Even now, despite of billions of dollars pledged to Afghanistan since 2001, we can clearly say, see, we can clearly see that in the rural areas, even in Kabul, in the capital of Afghanistan, a lot of, for thousands of children, 
underage working as a cheap labor, 14, 15, 16 years old. There is no enough school. If there are a school, there's children, they can't attend to a school because of poverty. This is another issue which we can't address all issues just now uh, while we have to finish because of very long day. We started at half past 10 and now it's five past 10. Yes, and thanks for the contribution, yes. About this, uh, the domestic violence and women rights, which is also is a very important issue that a lot of women in Afghanistan, they are suffering. There's no access to even maternity, where a woman, a pregnant woman, uh, in order to get to GP or clinic, they must, there's no public transport. They need to use donkey maybe as a, as a sort of transport in order to get from the village to the main district city, and then from the main district city until they get to the capital province or the, to if the central. She, if she's lucky. If she's lucky, then she die while she get to the hospital, because even in the rural areas or districts or provinces, there's no services for maternity or for women. And for uh, partnership, which was discussion about the Iranian Association, how we can, for example, support our people in order to make profit. Women in Afghanistan, they are working very hard. And she mentioned that she can help us with providing advice on business where our people can slowly start importing and exporting, which is very also is important issues. Then, hopefully that my colleagues, uh, they have noticed from all conversation that we had today since in half past 10 until now, from all present, uh, people who presented. And then we will try our best to, to send you the report of the conference as soon as possible. And then have to say thank you everyone for your positive contribution and hope that especially the European Council for Refugee Exile will be able to support this campaign in the future and convey our message to other colleagues, other organizations who, who are working within the European communities and hopefully they will be able to support the new campaign. And just want to say again, thank you very much for everyone who attended this today's event. Thanks again to Claire and Mariam for their hard work. And I just want to take the opportunities and just we have a small